Um, we need to check either reference the graph or you need to kind of think through the transformations and I'm going to point out a couple that you need to be thinking about. Okay. Um, so first of all, we need to think in general, what is a typical exponential function look like when it doesn't have any shifts or anything like that? If it's just b to the x, then remember it always crossed at 0, 1. You plug in 0, anything to the 0 power is 1. Um, and if b is greater than 1, it would look like this, but it never crossed the x-axis. If b was less than 1, uh, then it's just the opposite of that. It's decreasing, um, but it still never crosses the x-axis. Now, depending on what kind of shifts and stuff, sometimes it may move down to cross the x-axis, um, or it may flip over and cross the x-axis. You just have to look at the different pieces. So, for example, with number 31, okay, we will look at the graph, but I want to kind of talk through the pieces um, so that you can do these if you don't have a calculator. Okay, there are two things that you need to look for. You need to look for coefficients in front. Okay, you need to look at that number. If that is negative, what happens to our function? It flips over the x-axis. So instead of being above the x-axis like the picture I just drew, it's completely below the x-axis. It still doesn't cross the x-axis. But after that happens, we add 2 to it. So everything moves up to, so where we didn't cross the x-axis before, now we do. Okay, because where that kind of horizontal asymptote at x equals 0, or at y equals 0 was, now it's 2 units up. So we're approaching 2, so that means we've got to cross 0 somewhere in there. So we can calculate the x-intercept here. So set it equal to 0. Oops, minus 1. Set it equal to 0, solve for x. Okay, this is again where solving those equations comes in handy. So we'll move the 2 first, divide by negative 5. And here's the case. Um, if we hadn't have thought through the process beforehand, okay, here's where you should check to see if we can actually solve for x. If this right here were equal to a negative number, remember we can't raise a positive number to any power and get a negative answer. Um, but this is equal to a positive number, so that means it's possible. That means we can keep going. Um, now, um, I don't know the way to rewrite two fifths so that it has a base of one half. Remember, that was our first uh, reaction to try and solve these equations was to write them so they had the same base. Uh, I can't do that, so that means I have to result to writing it in logarithmic form. So write it as log. The base of the logarithm is the same as the base of the exponential. And the other stuff switches places. So the 2 fifths is now with the 1 half. And the x minus 1 is on the other side. Okay, that's the whole point. x should be on a, uh, on a side without um, an exponential or anything or a logarithm with it. That's the point. And then we need to add 1. But remember, we can't change what's in that logarithm. So it just gets stuck there on the end. That is our x-intercept. Yes, I want it in that form. Again, this is proving to me that you understand how to solve for, a, for an x-intercept and how to do it for different types of functions. Okay, you should be able to solve just about any equation now. We've done trig equations. We've done polynomial equations. We've done radical equations. We've done rational equations. We've done um, exponential and logarithmic equations. You should know how to solve all these equations at this point. Okay, so that's our x-intercept. The y-intercept is usually a lot easier, just plugging in 0 for x.
Now, that makes our exponent negative 1. A negative exponent flips things over, so 1 half to the negative 1 is actually 2. Okay, it just flips that fraction over, so our y-intercept here is negative 8. Our y-intercept is negative 8. So the y-intercept is 0, negative 8. All right. Um, now, notice. 32 looks very, very similar to 31. 32 looks very, very similar to 31. <clears throat> this is where we need to check before we start solving. Okay, so let's go through the same steps we did before. That 5 in front right there, it's positive this time. So it doesn't flip my function over. All it does is it makes all my y values 5 times as large. So I'm still not crossing the x-axis. And then I add 1 to everything, so then that just shifts everything up one unit. So I'm definitely not crossing the x-axis. This has no x-intercept. Now, again, if you had proceeded to solve this, um, if you had set it equal to 0 in an attempt to solve for x, you should notice that you subtract the 1 and divide by 5. That says 1 half to the x minus 1 is equal to negative 1 fifth. You cannot raise 1 half to any power, positive, negative, fractional, 0, anything, and get negative 1 fifth. It's just not going to happen. You're not going to get a negative number out of raising a positive number to a power. Um, so you should catch it at that point and say, oh, I can't actually do that. Um, now, we do have a y-intercept. Okay, We always have a y-intercept with these exponential functions. So plug in 0. Same deal here. We have 1 half to the negative 1 power. That's positive 2. So this time it's 10 plus 1, positive 10. Um, so our y-intercept is 11, 1. 11, 0. I don't know where 1 came from. 11, 0 is our y-intercept.